or to the cloud. I guess we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> we're recording to the cloud. Hi, um, most of you know me. I'm Julie and um, I garden for a living and a passion and it's a hobby and I feed myself that way. So, um, you know, I, I come from four generations of gardeners and I didn't have store-bought food and vegetables until I was in my 20s. We used to go to my grandmother's house every Sunday and pick up all our produce for the week. And I took that for granted until probably the last 10 years when um, local food and farming and organics became in style. It was kind of like a, a marketing trend, I think, for a while. And then as people continue to get sicker and sicker in their everyday life, um, they realize that it's the chemicals in the food, the chemicals in the soil. You know, in California, to be a, to have organic garden certification, you have to have soil that's been free of chemicals for 30 years. And about the only place in California that's like that is Marin County. And I lived in Northern California. So, you know, it was, you know, it was commonplace for me. Um, but what I found is the more gardening I do, um, the older I get. I think it's unfair that we have time to garden when we're older um, because it's so much harder on the body. Um, <clears throat> ask you how you know. Yeah, ask me how I know <laughs> the last few days. Um, so what have you been feeling in your body that makes you so bad? Um, just sore, aches and pains and hip hip joints hurt and you know just joints and things that i haven't used all winter you know i pretty much hibernated this winter it was so cold i didn't work out i didn't you know i didn't really do anything um and so now to get up and you know we have we've been in snow and cold weather for six months it's like you want to jump on it and get it all done you know and i had right somebody away. that i met yesterday that said she her hands have been hurting her uh -huh. because she's been working in the garden well and i have arthritis so you know anytime you have extra um you know extra work digging and um all of that it's it's tough sometimes not having the right size gloves will cause my arthritis to hurt more as you clench your hands around tools and pulling weeds. And so has anybody been out in the yard? Has anybody been gardening yet this year? What are you doing, Judy? Let me take you off mute. <laughs> I love that you just put your finger on the Well, <clears throat> last night, I I've got eight tomato plants that I grew from seed. Oh, and did I have 40 little seedlings that I've had trouble with them germinating this year for some reason. I, I don't know. Oh, there were all new seeds, so that's not it. And I was very careful to plant them at the right depth. But anyway, oh, and I've cleaned out all of my <clears throat> back flower garden, which took me three days of about five hours each. Oh. And Planted 18 of the butterfly bushes in there. Oh wow! I already had, I already had about that many, but I I want to get it all so it's just solid, so it keeps the weeds out. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. A tip for your uh, tray with your tomato seeds. Uh, maybe it was too cool. Did you use a heating mat with it, or put it on top of the refrigerator? Yes. Oh, did you? Yeah. Then it should have been yeah. warm. I've done it for. Years. I know last year I had trouble. I have two of them. One's like a little um, a tray itself that's heated, but it's pretty old. Like I would say 45 years old. Oh, wow. And last year, last year, one half of the tray didn't, the seeds didn't germinate. So this year, the same thing started happening. So I put it on the mat. And I think the mat must have gone bad now. It's only maybe 10 years old. Because wow. I planted 72 seeds and I only got, what, 50, 50 plants? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. 
Well, that's good. It's, it's tough to, to start from seed. I, I've never been a seed gardener unless- well, This is the only year I've had trouble. The only year in my entire life. I've been doing really? this for Oh, years. that's great. And, and um, down in Napa? In Napa. Last year, I carried him back and forth to Reno. But <laughs> this year, the weather finally got nice down there. And it's just been beautiful. And the ones I put in last weekend probably grew two inches over the weekend. And, and I put- um, ground up eggshells in the hole to give them the calcium. So yeah, the extra the calcium really well. helps with blossom end rot. Uh -huh. It helps them to form the structures of the tomatoes inside. So that's a good thing. Um, and I planted two rows of corn, a one of beans, radishes, turnips, beets, so peas are already producing. Beans, corn. Okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot, Judy. That's a lot. You got your produce for the year. I don't know. Squash yet. No carrots yet. No. Yeah. Oh, and our oranges. Are, yeah, our oranges and lemons are just overrunning us. Oh, wow. That's great. You know, I look at gardening when you first go out. It's kind of like a workout, you know. Um, wouldn't go out and run around the block without stretching first. I don't recommend going out and gardening without doing some stretching or doing, um, if you have a melt roller at home, you know, doing melt, getting that fluid flowing. Um, it's going to make everything work better. You think, you know, you, you've got your bones and you've got your muscle, but you need that fascia in between because that's what need, keeps everything moving as you're doing all these new um, and unusual uh, movements and stretching. So, you oh, know, squatting. yeah, squatting, <laughs> <laughs> squatting. I used to squat all the time. Uh, <laughs> that's how I planted. I would squat and boy, my knees don't like that anymore. So, um, you know, I have to treat my knees when I come in. Not that there's anything wrong with them other than they're old, um, <laughs> you know. So I kind of feel like there's a beginning and you want to hydrate a lot, you know, drink a lot of fluids so that that tissues uh, in your body, your muscles and everything are, are fluid as you're moving. Um, while gardening, you want to change positions a lot. If you're, you know, constantly pulling on one side, I came in the other day, my right shoulder was really sore. So I put the tool in my left and I did it with my left side for a while. <laughs> got that side sore. Yeah, and got that side. <laughs> Same with raking. If you're raking, um, you rake to the right and then you rake to the left instead of doing everything on one side. And, and that helps. Again, you know, you just keep drinking water. You've got to keep yourself hydrated. When you're out there, um, we've been inside all winter and you get outside, especially in our winds that we've had the last few days, the wind really dries you out. Um, it goes through your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and it just, it dehydrates you. Um, <clears throat> another thing is to have the right tool for the job. Um, I just had somebody over at my house because, you know, you're never too old to learn and I'm learning how to do some uh, more advanced horticulture things and she showed me a tool that has been around for a hundred years But I had never seen it before so I ordered it. It's a weeder. I'll share with you on my next garden class um, After I'm done for the day. Oh, you know, and before I go out I take a triese a lemon lavender and peppermint and that helps to block the allergies and keeps me from having that sneezing crust in the middle of my garden. Hi. There we go. Okay. Um, so, um, so I do that. So, you know, there's things that you can do to prep, um, and that's going to make your gardening day more enjoyable. Um, when I come in from the house, um, I want to get, I take my clothes off in the laundry room. I don't want to track all the pollen and the dirt through my house. You can't believe how much pollen gets in your hair and, and that you carry it with you. So when I come in from gardening, I immediately take a shower and get all that pollen off of me. Um, but you know, I suffer from pretty bad allergies. I may even take another triese once I come in. Um, 
You can also take an Epsom salt bath with lavender and Roman chamomile um, to help um, relax your muscles. You'll want to put a little bit of baking soda in there. It'll just help to soften the skin. Um, some of my favorite essential oils for sore muscles and inflammation. And these, some of these are new for me. Um, you know, I never really used Aromatouch before. And the last couple months I've been using Aromatouch and I really like it. I like that little menthol that it has. Um, I've been diffusing it in uh, my master bath and I just really like it. But I didn't realize that it is so good for pain. I mean, I should have known it's called massage blend. Um, but it has a lot of your really good um, pain oils. It's got, um, you know, peppermint and lavender and, you know, la the lavender and the Roman chamomile that helps to calm things down. <clears throat> I put my Aroma Touch in a roller bottle. Oh, I like that. That's a nice way to Where use it. Hi. <laughs> where's, where's Lucy? Where's Lucy? I know, it's the Lucy and Ethel show. <laughs> So, um, but, and then deep blue, of course, um, I'm not a huge deep blue fan, but that's me personally, because the first time I used the deep blue rub, um, I got it in my eye. And so there's something in my brain that says, yeah, no, don't use that. <laughs> um, but when I, I, when they came out with the deep blue roller ball, um, I like it because I don't have to touch it. So it's probably not going to get in my eye unless I fall down and <laughs> stab it in my eye. But my go-to always is frankincense um, with my arthritis and inflammation. Um, the frankincense just, it just takes care of everything. Um, the last couple of days I've been gardening in flip-flops. Don't do that. <laughs> just don't do it. But I was so, having so much fun with summer, I just didn't want to wear shoes. So I was in flip-flops and of course I paid for that with the arthritis. So, so where did you feel that was in your feet? Uh, big toe joint. Oh, okay. The big toe joint. Yep. That's where arthritis settles. Mm -hmm. And it, I look down and it's all like this and, you know, red and hot and swollen. And, but some frank and some deep blue and it was much better. So probably, mm -hmm. a, you know, a pair of gardening clogs if you're yeah. you know, feeling mm -hmm. kind of casual. But something that's going to be a closed Toe, I would definitely, definitely since I got bee stings last year in my foot. <laughs> Wendy saw me that day. Oh, right. When I came over here. Yeah, it swole up. I could not walk. It was bad. Um, and then another really good one is lemongrass. Um, that I used that once. Wendy talked about it in a class, and I used that once on tendonitis. I used to have tendonitis um, in, my, in my shoulder and down my arm. And I used lemongrass and I was surprised at what a great pain reliever yeah, it's that really is. Good. Does anybody ever have that pain that's at the back of their knee? Uh -huh. I've, I've noticed that myself, especially on that leg that I hurt. Lemongrass can be really helpful when you notice that because it's, it's usually a tendon. It can be um, a cyst back there too but it's usually a tendon and assist on your knee yeah really it develops in my, oh yeah. didn't know that ouch ouch um <clears throat> then the next one is marjoram and oh mm, um, i don't have that one here i do do you need it yeah um has anybody used marjoram for pain yes yeah it's always in it blends that we need oh, and there's marjoram margie and this is the, um, also it's the neuropathy uh, blend. I remember when I first started to talk to Nancy actually about essential oils, um, we talked about oils for neuropathy mm. and it's um, frankincense, margarine and peppermint. And I always think it's Frankie, Marge and Peppy. So that's <laughs> like a little family and you layer mm. them, <laughs> right Nancy? And you layer them one on top of the other and it's a great way to give you some relief from nerve pain. <laughs> Another good one is wintergreen um, for pain. Um, I really, I like, I like the smell of wintergreen. It's probably my favorite mint. I don't know that it's, I don't, wintergreen is not considered in the mint family, but um, I love it. It's my favorite mint. And that's when you can't take internally. No, you can't. It's got the, um, 
the child proof cap on it and it says essential oil. And I just pulled out my book and Wintergreen, the top uses gout and rheumatism, um, teeth whitening, <laughs> arthritis and joints, neuralgia and cramps, bone spurs and pain, cartilage injury and bruising, rotator cuff issues, and hey Bob, here's one for you, frozen shoulder. Um, I know it's not necessarily frozen, but um, you could try that. Um, dandruff, dermatitis, bladder infections, kidney stones, but, but a lot of them about inflammation, you know, when you consider the bone spurs and the, the bruising and the rotator cuff issues. So that's a very, very good essential oil for pain. Yeah, it, when I, I looked this up today and I saw that the number one thing is for gout. And if you've ever had gout, um, it is one of the most painful things ever. Yeah, that's an, a type of arthritis. It's mm -hmm. uric acid that accumulates in Evidently, the acid is a byproduct of decay inside mm -hmm. the body, so it just accumulates. You know, you think of, um, I think of like an old man that eats a lot of meat and yeah. gout and overweight and, you know, and that's not true. I mean, I have a tendency to get gout once. In, I haven't had it in a long time, but I've had it before and it is very painful and it usually has to do if I eat too much salt or too much red meat. Also, the wintergreen is one of the first ingredients that's listed in the deep blue rub. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I really like um, for the garden is, is peppermint and peppermint is also one that's on the pain the pain list. Um, I think of past tense. I think peppermint's in past tense, and that's the headache, the headache roller. But peppermint um, is good for lots of things. I, I don't ingest it that much, except maybe in a tri -ease. And that's one that you put on top of other oils. Mm -hmm. To push it in. Yeah, any of these over <clears throat> frankincense helps to push it in. Burns and sunburn. So if you're out mm -hmm. in the garden and you get a sunburn, you could put it on you or hives. And that's what I was going to say. You know, like a spray bottle, just a spray bottle with a few drops of peppermint and some water is great to carry with you when you're out in the yard. Um, if you get overheated, um, what did you just say? Overheating. Uh, 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 hot flashes. Hot flashes. Yeah. <laughs> The hot, hot mama spray. Hot mama spray. <laughs> but it also helps to cool you down. The peppermint on your skin brings your temperature down. Um, and it also keeps the bugs away. Bugs don't like it. Um, yeah, so it's for hot flashes, fevers. If you start to feel the sun, which I did this week. I have a farmer's tan this week <laughs> um, from wearing a t-shirt. And, um, you know, I come home and I put some peppermint water on. And it works really well to cool things down. Also in my book, it says bad breath and hangover. I always mm -hmm. feel like they kind of go together. Okay. Anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then the next round of, of oils is, and I'm winging this because um, it's from your handout. So, oh, can I do that? Yeah, you can just go down here. Did everybody get their handout? And you can, Ask them if they can see it. Um, and can, move this, this can I move them? Yeah. Okay, cool. okay. Can everybody see the handout? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just highlighted a few, <clears throat> a few of the pest protection. Um, I'm sure we all have ants, and uh, there are some things on here that we don't have. Um, you know, as, as Reno warms up and we get global warming, we're probably, we're starting to see termites here, which, you know, Reno never had termites before. Um, snails and slugs. We never had snails and slugs in Reno 10 years ago unless they came in on a, on a uh, plant from California. And I now have a client who has hostas and slugs. So we're trying this cedar wood, uh, Siberian fir protocol on that. Um, but ants, you would want to uh, mix up some peppermint, spearmint, cinnamon, black pepper, a little spray bottle or any combination of those oils. 
and you can put those out on the ant trail. And can you put those, like I get sometimes a little trail of ants in my kitchen, those little teeny, teeny, teeny. Those are the sugar ants. Okay. They're looking for sugar. Okay. So can you use that same you can. spray? You okay. Pepper, can. Peppermint and water is great. Okay. Um, I don't know that I do cinnamon or black pepper with tea. I don't know. Does she like peppermint? My dogs don't like any of the menthols. Um, they don't like any of the mints, so they'll stay yeah. away from it. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's up on my kitchen counter, so yeah. we'll keep her off the counter. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then aphids. Um, you know, I, I actually used a different... I sprayed uh, light horticulture oil earlier this year on my roses, and I haven't seen one aphid in my yard. Mm. First year ever. Um, but if you do, you could, again, use a spray bottle, mix up some cedar wood. I know cedar wood works really well with aphids. Um, sandalwood, spearmint, white fur, which we don't have anymore. I think sandalwood's a little too expensive for the bugs. Yeah. You, know. you don't want to treat them too well. No. <laughs> I would use uh, cedar wood and peppermint. And you could just spray your roses with a light solution. You may want to put a couple drops of Dawn dishwasher. Uh, the dish washing liquid. And why would you put that? Um, it's got essential fatty acid in it and that acts as a sticking agent. So it makes the oils stick on there. Otherwise they just run off. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that would be a little bit more effective yeah. on the plants. It would be more. It would last longer right. on the plant. Right. Um, and then beetles, caterpillars. I personally wouldn't kill caterpillars because I love butterflies. Um, you know, there's. But we get those moths too. Do you uh, we know? have a lot of moths. Those dusty um, Miller moths. Mm -hmm. Cedar wood, lavender, peppermint, spearmint, and eucalyptus for mm -hmm. those. And there's a lot right now. Um, somebody contacted me with a hummingbird moth, and I don't know if you've seen the hummingbird moth. They are really pretty, but they fly really fast, like a like a hummingbird, and they're big. They're almost their wingspan's almost two inches across. Yeah. And when you see those out in the yard or they hit you in the face, <laughs> it's like, it's a panic for a minute till you realize it's a hummingbird. They also call them the hawk moth. Um, gnats is another one. Gnats, um, to repel gnats, like in your, like soil gnats, mm -hmm. um, patchouli, spearmint, eucalyptus. You know, your oils for insects are, are pretty much the same whether you're using it as a spray outside, um, whether you're treating your plants, uh, no matter what you're doing, your oils are pretty much the same. Do you ever use the Terra Shield? Um, I'm not a big fan of Terra Shield, but that's because I don't like the smell. And I checked it today, and they do not use citronella anymore. Right. Um, but I still, it's, it's, I don't know what it is about it I don't like. I just don't like it. I don't mind it. Okay. <laughs> Tink likes it, Tink we likes know. It, yeah. But my favorite uh, go-to for running in a diffuser in my patio um, is eucalyptus and lemongrass. And how many, Julie's backyard is so pretty. She has like, it looks like rooms in her backyard. She has different sections and they're all decked out and decorated, they're just beautiful. And one of the things that you do notice are the diffusers that she has mm -hmm. out there. And are they serving not only a decorative purpose, but are they repelling the bugs too? They are repelling the bugs. I put it on intermittent. Um, I will set the diffuser to run continuous when I'm out there or when I'm getting ready to go outside, about 15, 20 minutes before I go. And then when I go out there, I'll set it to intermittent. And I'll just let it run. And that area is bug free. Yeah. I can bring out a plate of food. I can eat out there. The dogs can have their bones out there. And the bugs aren't going to bother us. We used to make those, what do we call them? The mason jar illuminating mm -hmm. bug repellent. <laughs> it was a very long title, but they were really beautiful. Yeah. There were mason jars filled with water and some essential oil. <coughs> and then we floated rosemary and lemon slices. Yeah. And we got these floating candles and put them inside the jars. And they were just beautiful on your picnic table. Really pretty. I should have loaded some pictures. Well, maybe my... you can put that on the, um, yeah. the Facebook page. Yeah, I'll, do, I'll do that. I'll put we'll that recipe. We'll give you the instructions. Because that's, that's a really fun thing to do. And it's easy 
you know, most of us have a lemon or a lime and some rosemary at our house. It's a really fun thing to do. Um, mosquitoes. It says lavender, lemongrass, arborvitae, and terra shield. Um, I think one of the, the key things with mosquitoes is don't allow any standing water in your yard. Um, you'd be surprised the things that collect water, whether it's rainwater, sprinkler overspray, or you know, you've just watered something and the water collected in the bottom of a saucer. Any idea how long it takes for that, you know, the mosquito larva to show up? It's quick. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's it quick. Um, I live on uh, on Lake Ditch, and one year they cut the water off, and so we had standing water in the ditch. And I called the Vector Department of Washoe County, and they came out and they put minnows in the water, and then they treated the surface of the water with, they told me it was non-chemical, I don't know, um, like a film, because it's about a two-week period where they will lay eggs, the larva will hatch, and you've got mosquitoes coming up out of the water. Most insects are about a two-week recycle period. So, you know, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long, but, you know, mosquitoes are carrying diseases. The warmer the earth is getting, um, the more diseases we're seeing. And we have more mosquitoes here in Reno than we've had uh -huh. uh, before. Actually, I heard that they were spraying. They do spray. They spray out in Lemon Valley right. with all that water problem. They spray over um, in the lakes at uh, Rosewood Lakes Golf Course, uh, just this side of Hidden Valley. They spray out there a lot um, and have been for many years. Um, let's see. So, you know, defense is, is the key to insects. Um, you know, we don't really have ticks here. Um, I got a load of, so of humus soil from California and Axel got a tick, you know, but ticks don't, don't really live here. Up in the mountains, yeah, you'll see a few, but you know, we're higher altitude. Ticks, ticks need a little bit warmer and moister than we are here. And aren't they usually found in taller grasses anyway? Mm -hmm. So we don't mm -hmm. really have that much opportunity for that kind of yeah. growth, right? Yeah. But we took Tinkerbell to um, Northern California. This is years ago and she was just young. And um, some of you may know the story, but my very first doTERRA essential oil was Terra Shield. And I didn't use it on myself. I used it on the dog. <laughs> and uh, Kimberly gave me a small uh, one quarter gram sample and I wet a kerchief and put a couple of drops of tear shield on the kerchief and just tied it around mm -hmm. Tinkerbell's neck and she didn't mind it at all. And she didn't get any ticks that year when we were up there. So it does really work uh, for ticks and mosquitoes and those no see those, those things are so annoying. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other thing is weevils. Um, I don't always think of us as having weevils, but we do. We have a black vine weevil that can be really uh, detrimental to a broadleaf evergreen. If you look at like your rhododendrons or um, it's usually a broadleaf evergreen type plant and the leaves will be all jagged. It'll almost look like it was cut with a serrated knife. Um, that's root weevil. Um, you can see them at night. They come up out of the ground and they climb the plant and they just chomp the edges of the leaves. Um, so they're a pain. But you can uh, then spray the ground and spray the crown of the plant and the stem, uh, the stem and the trunk of the plant with cedar wood, patchouli, or sandalwood. I wouldn't use sandalwood, it's too expensive. So what would you do, Julie? Would you get one of those plastic spray bottles? I would or? just, yeah, just any spray bottle. Um, any of your doTERRA spray bottles, glass spray bottles. I'm not a huge fan of glass out in the yard just because I'm such a klutz. So I really like the metal one. And I like this one a lot because for me and my old hands, you know, I can just press it down and it has a continuous spray. This is great for the peppermint in the yard in your tool bag. Um, you know, one of the things I saw is that, um, 
they're using essential oils to, as pollinators to attract the bees. I thought that was interesting. I have not tried that yet. Has anybody else tried that? Uh, I'm going to try it because I have not seen as many bees as I would like to. It's still chilly, but I'm just not seeing bees. Um, I recently joined uh, Pesticide Free Reno because people don't realize that using Roundup, um, using Roundup or some of those other killers, weed killers that we find to be so easy are so detrimental. I mean, if you've ever seen a bee that's gotten into Roundup, you can watch them. They're like drugged walking on the concrete. That's when my dogs get them. Yeah. You know, I remember spraying some kind of a bug killer that I'd gotten, you know, at Lowe's or Home Depot or something on some of the flowers in my garden. And I felt like I had changed the structural DNA of the mm -hmm, plant. Mm -hmm. It acted, the, the leaves were just kind of deformed and the plant just looked really unhealthy. I'd gotten rid of the bugs, but the plant itself had really suffered. So I would imagine using some of our essential oils to get rid of some of our pests wouldn't necessarily be detrimental on your plants, right? No, no, it's not at all because it's not, you know, we, we think our essential oils are so volatile, you know, it's not like they're going to um, leave an oily residue on the plant because you never want to have an oily residue on your plant because then the sun comes through like if you've watered your plant, the sun hits that water drop and burns the leaf. Same thing with oil, but essential oils are completely safe to spray on your plant. Um, a friend of mine told me a story, and she runs a wellness center here in Reno, and her husband was spraying Roundup on their pavers. They had a paver courtyard, and he was spraying Roundup in all the cracks to get rid of the weeds. And, you know, her Doberman would go out there and lay there mm -hmm. and stretch out on the hot concrete. Mm -hmm. And one day the Doberman had a hard time breathing and they took the Doberman to the vet and um, the dog was all full of cancer. So that kind of tells me, mm, yeah, Roundup probably does cause cancer. You know, Monsanto is, you know, they're, they're bigger. They're almost as big as big pharma. So it's, you know... The more you can do for the earth and your gardening to keep things safe. Um, you know, we all have grandkids. We want our grandkids to be able to dig in the dirt safely and yeah. not. And those chemicals stay in the soil. For many so, years, you know, many years. Think about Judy growing her vegetables back there. You want to make sure that whatever you put on your soil to protect your plant isn't going to be detrimental to your own health. Now in Nevada, to become a certified organic gardener in Nevada, uh, you only have to have clean, sterile soil for 10 years. And the reasoning behind that was, well, why didn't you have to have 30 years like California? Because they couldn't have done it. They couldn't have done it. You know, Nevada's had chemicals in their soil a lot. Um, well, with that in mind, do you want to talk about um, what CPTG means in terms of the difference or similarities with organic labeling? Talk about um, yeah, certified pure therapeutic grade. Um, therapeutic grade, I don't know a lot about this, but I know that um, it's, you know, it's like the highest grade. It is the therapeutic grade for the human body. Um, organic, you know, organic to be certified, you just have to be have, have whatever you're using grown in a pure, clean soil, according to the organic OMRI, OMRI, organic research, uh, uh, the OMRI. Um, they're the ones that set the standard for organic uh, certification. And doesn't that word organic mean different things in different places around the world? It does mean different things. Um, you know, a lot of times they don't use organic over in Somalia because they've never used chemicals there. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's mm -hmm. another reason why doTERRA's essential oils are not classified as organic because our standards in the United States for that term, mm -hmm. organic, is not something that's translatable around the world in some of those areas that doTERRA sources their products. And the other thing that I think is important to consider is that 
let's say you get some produce from, you know, I'm not picking on Mexico for any particular reason, but let's say you, I do. <laughs> you, let's say you get some produce from Mexico. It can have an organic label on there, but there's nobody that's standing on the field that's checking that they could put that label on just as an opportunity to get that product into the United States. Whereas when we grow our, our raw materials for the essential oils, there's somebody from doTERRA there on the field. So they're mm -hmm. checking the water, they're checking the soil. They can't use the word organic because it just doesn't translate around the world. But CPTG is almost better mm -hmm. in my opinion than organic. Yeah. Um, organic certification is different state to state. <laughs> Um, it's not, you know, there's places that aren't organic, but they say it. Organic has become a marketing word. Um, one of the, the changes that some of the local farmers are using are, are sustainability. You know, it's, it's land that can sustain itself. Um, you know, so mm, we've, we've overused organic. So, um, about the only way you know you're really getting organic is if you're buying from, if you know the farmer you're buying from, or if you're growing it in your own backyard. Yeah, yeah. So, um, does anybody have any questions? How have you been I, using your essential oils in the, either in the garden or to help with any bug issues? Anybody have any stories about that? I wanted to say something about Terra Shield because I haven't used it often, but I put it on my pants and shirt when I spent two hours under the Petaluma house and I wasn't bitten by any bugs and there's spiders everywhere under that <laughs> house. And I was under there for two hours rerouting a vent, and didn't get one bite. So wow, that's a great Good. thumbs up to Terra Shield. Yeah. Yeah, that's great to hear. It, it does work. It's a great, I think it's a great product. And of course, you probably know this, but it comes in a spray bottle and a 30 mil spray bottle. So it's really convenient if you're going to be going hiking or, you know, you're out <coughs> taking a walk somewhere and just throw it in your backpack or in your purse and just carry it with you. It's a good one. I bought the 15 mil bottle and just dabbed it on. I didn't have a spray bottle at the time I used it. You didn't have to dilute that or anything, Linda? You just... No, I just put it on my clothes, on my pants and my shirt because they were old clothes and I didn't <laughs> care about the stains on the clothes. I cared about not getting bit by yeah. buggies. Right, nice. Can you tell me about wintergreen for cramps? What would you put it on before you got cramps? I get cramps in my legs at night and I'm looking for <laughs> solutions to not wake up with my legs cramped well I guess my question is why you know why are you getting those leg cramps I haven't figured that out yet it's either <laughs> dehydration or it's lack of um, magnesium or you know I'm not sure because it may be like every third night could be two two times in a night it couldn't happen for three days so there's no real Prime reason for it. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't seem to matter if I work hard during the day or if I don't. There just <coughs> isn't anything I can say. It's because of this. Well, I know when um, I was struggling with my knee that I very much enjoyed giving myself a foot bath with Epsom salts. Mm -hmm. Something that you want to try. Does anybody have any suggestions for Linda? Anybody ever had any issues with leg cramps? Um, I did. <coughs> I used to get Charlie horses in my leg that would like, mm -hmm. I'd have to get up, stand I up, do. and flex mm -hmm. my foot. And um, I would just up my calcium, magnesium, and drink mm -hmm. lots of water, and that went away. I've been having a pain that seems to go <coughs> from the hip to the knee to the ankle the more I'm working. And then I just mm -hmm. been using like Frank and uh, Is that like a sciatica pain? No, it's not like sciatica because it doesn't really go down the leg. It kind of just, it connects. <laughs> Sounds like a melt job. Yeah, it is a melt job. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's how I lay at night. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I don't sleep on my mm -hmm. left side because it yeah. then hurts my hip to my knee, mm -hmm. my foot. Well, and mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. like the 
about using that winter green. And I, I guess you could just apply that where you need it. Let me just take a quick look. Um, <coughs> let's see, what did we say? Gout and rheumatism, it just says the root and a to the bacteria to see discomfort. Just a second. Same thing with the rotator cuff, just dilute it and apply topically where you need it. Mm -hmm. So then wait for the cramp and then put it on. I've used... Um, Put it on before you go to bed. You lemongrass know. and marjoram. I've used a lot of different things in deep blue. And sometimes they're so tight, I have to go stand in the shower till I can get my, <coughs> my thighs to release because they're just so cramped. Oh, boy. Isn't that strange? Here you are sleeping and your muscles are contracting. Are you plenty of fluid? I try. Yes, I drink all day long. But... Well, I try and drink more. I drank more yesterday and still had cramps. So, well, I, I would love to see you try that wintergreen, maybe just on the bottoms of your feet and see mm -hmm. if that travels up into. Mm, okay, I put it out by my bed already, so it's right yeah. there. Yeah. And the other one. Yeah, that I you. <laughs> Wendy, can you talk a little louder? I can't turn my thing up. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I was saying that the winter green on the bottoms of her feet before she goes to bed might be something that she'd like to try. And then the other thing that I think is really good is the rollerball deep blue. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, and that kind of migrates up the leg um, and that might help you feel better too. But let us know, you know, as you experiment with these things between the um, Epsom salt foot bath and maybe the more, the more calcium and, and try some of these essential oils, see what uh, works and let us know. We'd love to hear. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to try that deep blue rollerball on my foot and see if it yeah, travels cool. up to the knee to the hip. Yeah, it does. So who wants to make a spray? We were going to make a... Can I say a comment? Uh -huh. I suffered for years and years and years with those cramps and nobody knew what it was until I got magnesium and it was a magnesium deficiency. Yeah. So mm -hmm. did you take mm -hmm. internally, Judy? Did you I can't hear you. Did you take the magnesium internally? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you take Mar that? Do you take that every night? No, I in fact I don't take any extra anymore, and I had to be really careful not to take too much. Or there's different kinds of brands. I mean, I had to take the form magnesium glyconate. I couldn't take magnesium oxide or whatever, you know, some of the less expensive ones, but I had to take a magnesium glyconate that my doctor had me take, and then that, that really helped it. But the last week I've been having a, a lot, and it's probably because I've been working in the yard so much, and I think I probably wasn't melting enough. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I must have my volume down. I don't know if I can, how, how to get it up at this point. Well, we'll talk nice and loud. <laughs> I'll pretend I'm talking to my husband. <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is anybody going to make anything? Um, I know the last few days I've been, uh, a couple days ago, I ended up with a bee in the house. I finally come in, sit down, and I hear all this buzzing. <laughs> buzz, 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 buzz. Yeah, and I was just like, really? So I go to look, I'm like, it's probably just a fly. And no, it was a bee, it was a honeybee in my house. So I caught it and put it outside. But um, what I do is I, I just take one of these, um, one of these oils, cedar wood's a nice one, um, even just the peppermint and water in a spray bottle. And I spray my door jam. You know, I spray up high when I'm spraying in my patio for bugs. Bugs don't fly from the ground up. They fly from the sky down. So when they come in the house, they're going to come from high. So I spray up above. I spray the roof outside my back door because I have a, a little cover over my back door. I spray around my door jam and it keeps the bugs out. My dogs are 10 and 11 now and they're really slow going in and out of the house. So if I don't do that, my house is full of insects. I remember you doing that last year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it really works. It really helps to keep 
keep them away. Same with when I'm eating out in the patio, I will spray up in the umbrellas and, mm -hmm. you know, and then that keeps the bugs away. It keeps the, because they're going to fly from up to down. You know, I was just thinking about how we went out to lunch at the stone house mm -hmm. and she had the dryer sheets, the dryer sheets at the table. <laughs> no dryer sheets. So I guess the thinking was that the dryer sheets would keep the insects away, right? Uh, it's supposed to keep the insects away, but how toxic are dryer sheets? <laughs> you know, trust me, I tried to get her to make a, a bug spray, a simple bug spray. How pretty would that be to have those floaty candles mm -hmm. with essential oils on mm -hmm. every table? Yeah. Be really pretty. So, what are you? Are you going to make something, Julie? I am. I am going to make. Um, Do you need any supplies? Do you need water? No, I got everything. I've got water here, okay. and I'm going to do a cedar wood. I love these spray bottles too. They're um, um like aluminum or something. I think aluminum. They're this very lightweight metal, and I bought a whole bunch of them. I think they're really sexy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sexy little bottle. I like them because I love the peppermint water to take in the cooler with me, like to the beach or in my backpack on a hike. Um, and then you've got that peppermint water with you and it cools you off, keeps the bugs away, keeps the insects away. So I'm, but I'm going to do cedar wood because I forgot until I was um, looking today how good cedar wood is. And it's warm, you know, it's kind of a warm, calming which we could use today with the weather smells like cigars to me mm, that's nice. but that's what i say about turmeric too it smells like cigars um, where have you been smoking i don't know <laughs> it just smells like cigars so what to are you going to do with this cedar wood it's for a bug repellent Is i'm going to do thing? cedar wood and peppermint okay i'm just making it up as i go because all of these oils i think work equally well Okay. you know for whatever for yeah for whatever okay. that I use lemongrass and eucalyptus in diff in my diffuser outside because that's my favorite lemongrass and lavender and, and eucalyptus oh eucalyptus mm -hmm. oh these two. I love eucalyptus mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's pretty yeah that I wouldn't have put those together <laughs> mm -hmm. but they both have their own kind of insect repellent mm -hmm. And so good for your respiratory system. Good for my respiratory, good for my pain. I just like the smell. Judy, how are you doing with your asthma? Are you unmuted? Can you oh, unmute? Geez. No. Yeah. How are you doing with your asthma? Oh, can you unmute yourself, Judy? Okay. I'm better in Reno at this season than I am in Napa right now. Yeah. Yeah, I bet everything's Yeah, they tested me. The only thing I was uh, I reacted to was dog. Sorry. <laughs> the only thing I react. So I see the doctor again. He's checking me for eosinophilic asthma. Uh -huh. So we'll see. I'm beginning to think it's from secondhand smoke because my dad was a smoker. Because I do really well on Spireva and Advair, except for what it does to my heartbeat. <laughs> you know, this week, um, actually last week, my allergies got so bad. I had such bad congestion and our pollen count in Reno was so high. So I was, I've been taking um, Wendy's famous allergy cocktail, which that is, so uh, it's two drops each of lemon, lavender, peppermint, Roman mm -hmm. chamomile, turmeric, and copaiba. I oh. love that. Yeah. It's I mean, good. not only did it help my allergies, it cured me from having anything go down into my lungs yeah you know sometimes you get those allergies so bad like a post and, yeah and then they travel down into your lungs um i've also been using the neti pot well it's not really a neti pot. it's a nose washer um and it's 
it's, it's been great. How many times are you taking the capsule? Like, do you take it every day? Or are you taking it? Um, I was taking it twice a day, morning and night when I was bad. And then uh, today I didn't take one, obviously, because it's raining out. Yeah. Um, but I took one yesterday. Um, I'm just kind of taking it as needed. At first, I took it twice a day for three days. And then I felt good. So yeah, It's I, amazing how it dries out my nose so I don't have the post-nasal mm -hmm. drip. I think that's from the Roman chamomile, which is a natural antihistamine. And then the lemon, lavender, and peppermint are part of our allergy cocktail. And then the turmeric is a huge anti-inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And the copaiba is great for your immune system and your respiratory system. So it really is a great... Uh, combination. It is great. I didn't know that about Roman chamomile being mm -hmm. an antihistamine. Oh, I'm going to take more of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so did you finish your little spray? Got that made? I did. Okay, I that did. Was easy. So yeah, just a little bit of spray and little oil, little water. You put some water in here. You can add about a quarter teaspoon of Epsom salts. Um, you want to mix the salt with your oil, swirl it around, and then you add your water. And do you make any labels for that? <laughs> uh, sometimes I do. Um, usually what I do is I just take a cap label and put it on the bottle. Oh, so the oil cap. So stick. the oil cap sticker, sticker put on. I put on my bottle. Mm -hmm. um, that way I know what I've got in here. That's the easiest, quickest way for me. If I'm giving um, some a spray as a gift, then I'll make a label. Yeah. Um, but usually I just use the cap labels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Julie. That well, was, thanks. That was great. I'm going to kind of slide yeah. the screen over a little bit. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, I just wanted to remind you that this is our last oil camp class. And we're going to take a little bit of a break and probably come back probably in July since I'm going to be out of town for the month of June. Oh, my gosh, the whole month. Um, and what else do I want you to know? Julie's going to be setting up her farmer's market table uh, starting on June 6th, Six. which is a Thursday. And does it start at 4? Four? Uh, 4 to 8. 4 to 8. And it's going to be like a block party. There's going to be food trucks down there, all music. kinds of music. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be really festive. So some of the team will be there, and she'll have some product on the table. And it'll be all uh, essential oil inspired for the most part. So come on down. And join us. We'd love to see you down Thank there you. and have some fun uh, with, with lots of other yeah. vendors. It's going to be great. Um, let's see, for doTERRA news, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the Healthy Habits kit. I talked about that kit, um, I guess last week was my turn. So I did it last week. Uh, the Healthy Habits kit is 20% off. Um, and I heard through the grapevine that's going to be available through the month of May. And that's a great value because it comes with the Life One Vitality Pack. So if you take that already, it's mm -hmm. really, you get all of these great products. You get five essential oils. Let me see if I can remember. Uh, you get frankincense, lemon, lavender. You get balance. You get On Guard. I can't remember if it comes with a deep oil or not. It comes with a deep blue rub, PB Assist, um, Terrazyme. Terrazyme. I don't know how I forgot that. And the Life mm -hmm. One Vitality. So it's a great deal. Um, really, really product. It comes as an enrollment kit as well as just a kit that you can purchase yourself for 20% off. Um, let's see, a couple of other things that I'm thinking of. I have been sending out an automated email and it in some ways takes the place of our online oil camp classes. These are just little snippets of product information, health information. So the one that went out late on um, late Monday night, last night, was about terazymes, digestive enzymes. And so that's probably going to be what I do until we meet here again for another online oil camp series. So check your email. Those are going to be really quick little videos, five minutes, 10 minutes tops. Uh, the next one next week is about a comparison of CBD and copaiba. And uh, I'm really excited to share some of that information from you that I did a little bit of research. And of course, listen to Dr. Hill at our leadership training. He was really forthcoming with his information. Uh, just as a little teaser to that, doTERRA sounded like they would be interested in putting the CBD on their product line if they could find a certified pure therapeutic grade source. 
for that. And as of now, none of the CBD sources that they looked at would meet their standards. So that was kind of an interesting thing for them to say. Um, considering that this is our last online oil panel, I would love to hear from you. I would love to know what kinds of topics you're most interested in. We can certainly revisit some of the things that we've talked about in the past, whether it's aches and pains or a cleanse, or we can talk about gardening as the summer, um, the season. We can talk about really anything that's on your mind, but I want to make it relevant and fun for you. So if you have any ideas, I'd be happy to hear mm -hmm. from you. Okay, that is that. Very nice to see you all tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Linda, you look great. How's that? <gasps> you, you really Thank look, you. Yeah. Are you feeling good? Yes. Yeah. I, good. Finished my th I finished my first three weeks, so okay. I do really feel good. Good, good, good. So she's been on a uh, special diet, and uh, I can see it. It looks really good. <laughs> oh, yeah, my hair is a mess, but hey. Oh, no, you look adorable. And Nancy's on her AIP plan. Are you still doing that? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Don't, I get, am. don't get the tiger nuts. Okay, I'm not going to. <laughs> so you know what tiger nuts are? I, I, tiger nuts is an alternative flower. Tiger nuts grow, it's nodules that grow on the roots of bog plants in Oregon. Wow. And I bought, you know, I was so missing nuts and nut butter that I had to try it. It was disgusting. <laughs> it was disgusting. Like <laughs> 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 Yeah, I did not like it, the tiger nut. It all I sent, can tell. <laughs> And they were very expensive. Yeah, they, okay. they were, but yeah, the nodules on roots of plants. I was okay. like, okay. <laughs> but I think you'll like cassava and coconut flour. Yeah, I have used both of those, and I'll just use those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you, Nancy? Do you have a little allergy or a cold? Uh, you know, yeah, I have a little bit of congested um, from that cough, like from a month ago. Oh dear. Well, maybe you want to try that <coughs> capsule. It's been a really, mm -hmm. it's been amazingly effective. And I, if you do try it, let me know how it worked for you. It's, it's a good remedy. Okay. I'll, I wrote it down. I think I got everything. It was, um, where did I go? This lemon, lavender, peppermint, turmeric, kababa, kobaba, and Roman chamomile. That's uh -huh. it. You got two drops of each in a veggie cap. And I'm taking it three times a day, and I can't believe how nice and open mm -hmm. my sinuses feel. I'm not sniffling and coughing like I usually do. If I don't take it, the cough comes right back. So it's oh wow, yeah, it's definitely. Helpful. If I know I'm going to be outside, I'll make one up and take it. Yeah, because it really helps. And then also the steamer cup is good too. Um, peppermint, oh. malaleuca, lemon, oregano. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. that a lot this winter, unfortunately, because my grandson shared his cold with me. I they know, do he's that. so cute. <laughs> he is so cute, I know. <laughs> but he would, and thank you, but he would turn, he'd be on my lap and he would turn and sneeze right in my face. Oh, yeah. sharing the love. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, let's see, the other thing I wanted you to know is that we're having a wellness festival at Awakens Network on Saturday. Awakens Network is this really cool collaborative of uh, therapists and healers right across the street from Moana Nursery on Moana Lane. So go in and get some flowers and then just come right across the street and come and visit me. I'm gonna be there, Julie's gonna be there and Tara's gonna be there for a while. Uh, I'm giving two foot treatment presentations there but um, all of the other um, amazing, talented, fabulous women are also going to be giving presentations. So you'll have everything from Aston patterning to EFT to, I think there's somebody doing Qigong. And so it's just an opportunity to try on some different things. There's going to be a lot of free uh, gifts. I have a table full of freebies if you want to come by and check that out. If you know anybody that's interested in enrolling in doTERRA, for the month of May, I've got some really good um, little freebies that I'm going to be giving away with either the Healthy Habits Enrollment Kit or the Natural Solutions Kit. So come on by if you want to, 10 to 5. I'd love to see you.
maybe okay. thinking about it. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that'll be it for tonight. Have a great evening. Uh, keep your eye on your email and share information on our online, online Facebook page, even though we're not going to be meeting as a group for a while. I'm going to miss you like mad. <laughs> but uh, check those emails out too, okay? Okay. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks, Julie. Yeah, thanks, Julie and Wendy. Call me with questions. <laughs> yeah, we uh -oh. will. <laughs> All right. Thanks, ladies. Have a good night. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you. Where's my exit button? <laughs> We're all trying to find it. There it is. Okay. <laughs>